What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we're here at the Nerd Castle with the first episode of a series that I am very, very excited about. It's called Transistor, and it's developed by Supergiant Games. It is the spiritual successor to Bastion, and so the game takes place inside of a computer as far as I can tell. Most of the references you're going to be seeing are related to programming and whatnot, but it's an action RPG with a turn-based element, and it is a lot of fun thus far. With what I've played, I was really excited to bring you guys along. I haven't been this stoked about a game in, oh, a couple months. I mean, I'm really, really excited about this one, and so I figured there was absolutely no way that I was not going to put it up on the nerd castle there's gonna be a lot of storyline I'm gonna do my best to be silent during it I know that I tend to have like verbal diarrhea so I'm gonna try and keep it on the lowdown this game is very much like bastion where there's a lot of ambiance there's a lot of chat there's a lot of things going on and so I don't want to ruin that for you so without further ado let's play ourselves some transistor hey red we're not gonna get away with this are we doesn't look like it you stabbed a dude to death and he seems to be very on the fence about it hey <laughs> bad puns I'm going to be playing with an Xbox controller. There. Together again. Sort of. I'm going to be using an Xbox controller because, frankly, the game's PC controls are pretty abysmal. I don't like them at all. And it's way, way easier to play with an Xbox controller. I would strongly recommend playing this game with a controller. The Wasp controls are just, they're weird. They don't, they work, but I don't like them at all. What a night. You're still in one piece. That's all that matters. Essentially, the reason I don't like it, if you wanted an explanation, is if you look at the bottom of the screen, we've got an attack on A, which is this little short-range attack. We've got an attack on B, which is a long-range laser, like so, that damages everything for a huge amount, but it's got a long load-up time. What would happen is on the PC, if I decided to do this, there would be a 1 and a 2 on the A and the B, respectively. And if you pressed that key on your keyboard, it swaps what your right mouse button does. And it's just, it's not as easy as having them all on a gamepad right in front of you. So the game does feel as though it was developed specifically for a console. Yikes. Found us already. They want him back, I bet. And so we're gonna corner trap this guy because So do I. Because if there's one thing that Street Fighter has taught me, it's that if you can corner trap somebody, you win! Well, depending on the character. I don't nice. know. Okay, let's go. Unmarked alley. Just to the bay. I think I know where we are. So over here. Okay, so let's go ahead through the door. More of these creeps. Look, don't fret, just. And so now the game goes into the turn-based mode. By pressing the right trigger, the game goes into turn-based mode. And what you can do is, if you look at the top of the screen, I'm going to use the mouse right now to point this out to you so you guys see what's going on. At the top of the screen, as I run around, you see that? It actually uses up the duration of your bar. I can press the left trigger to undo my last action, but what it wants me to do is go down to here, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to queue up a normal A attack. It's going to do 50 damage. We're going to move to here. We're going to press the B button to line up a... Guess, I guess like a laser attack that's going to go through. It's kind of a piercing attack that hits everybody. And then once we've lined that up, you'll see at the top we're all out of activities. So then we can either press the space bar or the right trigger to activate our plan. And so there it is. It all goes into action. Not yet. Now the downside to using that is that after you use your turn based, you can't use any activities until the bar recharges. So you got to be careful about it. You want to use it at the right moments. Otherwise, you get yourself into trouble. Let's beat these things to death really fast. Look like little eye killers. And I mean like eye as in apple killers. Why they would be killing apples, I don't know. No, they look like they were designed by Apple. Hey, if that up there. Hello world. Look at all that. We're on the edge of town. A hundred blocks away. There's the empty set. Still too close to it. We better get as far from there as possible. Okay, so let's get as far away as possible. Come on. Block party up ahead. Here we go. Well, if there's one thing I'm good at, it's busting blocks, so let's do it. <laughs> My laser's longer than yours. That's what happens. We're good. She looks sort of dead to me, man. Hi. You okay? I see. Sure. She wants to come along. We can use her. And so we've got an ability called Spark now. 
Got an ability called Spark now that allows us to do a little bit of a grenade attack. It's pretty sweet. I like using it. It's one of my favorite attacks thus far that I've unlocked. Let's go have a look around the promenade. Looks like we got the OVC terminals here. You want to find these. They all let you make, like, I guess dictations about how the game world is going to change or something. It's a very weird game. As far as both aesthetically and with regards to the content, the game is very strange. And it takes a little while to wrap your head around. Wish it was raining. Cover your tracks. So tomorrow's forecast. Tomorrow's another day in Cloudbank. How would you like it? Rain's not even on the ballot. I'm going to go with scattered clouds. I like a little bit of overcast. It makes me happy. Mild and inoffensive. Where were we? Oh, gross. Alright, so we got a bunch of these little dudes right here. Pretty sure I can grenade most of them to death. Yeah. No problem. I really do like that ability because it's rapid fire. Like, you can cast it very, very quickly, and it does a lot of damage, too. Really, really cool attack that they give you early on, and I tend to rely on it pretty heavily. I think there's another OVC terminal down here, so let's go ahead and activate that because I know there's an achievement. Cloud Bank Fashion Week not happening, huh? Your presence will make the 67th Annual Fashion Week an unforgettable experience. Three days this time. Three day extravaganza. We cordially invite you to our 67th annual event. Cloud Bank's popular tradition will be at its most spectacular with your support. Space is limited, so please reply soon so we know if not to expect you. Or so we know whether or not to expect you. That sentence is a little awkward. See you there. Maybe next year. Okay. Apparently we're not going to get our fashion on. We can't use our enormous collar and scarfing skills to get anything done. One thing I will say about the game is thus far, it's the it's release day, so there have been some technical issues, however. You may notice that the screen freezes every now and again. It does that no matter what. It's not like my PC or anything, it's just... I've had multiple other people on the forums talking about it. It's got a stutter, basically. It's you. I'm so sorry, Red. They took your voice. I couldn't stop them. Well, we took something of theirs. Hey, let's just go. So my face looks like after I eat a McRib. Come on, just go. Just... <laughs> she doesn't look friendly. She looks quite unpleasant. Ooh. Well, I don't want to do... No, no, no. Just take me out of turn-based mode. I don't want this anymore. Okay, well, maybe I do. Let's move all the way over to here. We'll give her a stab. She teleports around whenever you hit her, so really, there's no big point in hitting her more than once. Like, you can't chain damage her or anything. And then we'll swing out to here. We'll throw out one more attack, and that should get her. They do continue to move slightly, though. Go ahead and wipe those out with an AoE. Okay. Side street due east. Through there. She looks pretty angry in that portrait. Could get a ride. This didn't used to be here. So puzzle solving skills are a go. I think they want me to go like so, there we go. And then maybe one over here. Yay, it worked! Oh, okay. I was a little bit worried because after we blew up the first one that was over here, the door didn't open, but I was like, Oh no, I'm gonna look foolish on camera! My puzzle-solving skills are all for naught! That who I think it is. It's another dead guy that you're gonna talk to? Hey, Mr. Moyle. You in there? It's him alright, but I can barely hear him. So now we have Jaunt, a very, very good ability. Interesting. Go where it suits you, right? That would be an amazing, amazing slogan for a place that sells dress oh, uniforms. No. Cut off our escape. They sell business apparel. Go where we suit oh, you. Man, tough guy. 
That's easy for you to say, man. You're a sword. You're made out of hard materials. I am squishy, and presumably made of digital material. I don't even know how that reacts to stress or pressure. I'm just gonna stay the hell away from him because he looks really... He's shooting his... He's bad at aiming, I'll say that for him. He's aiming his lasers only at the ground. Maybe that's his propulsion system, though. And now I'm getting lasered from behind, which is way worse than getting lasered in the front. Back where they belong. And there we go. We have leveled up for the first time. So basically the level up system in this game is very unique. If you've ever played Bastion, it's very similar to that situation where you do level up, but it's kind of a alternate advancement type system in which you unlock buffs to abilities you already have, you unlock weird things that unlock new paths, you unlock mods, and so it's a level up system, but it's not a level up system in the classical sense. Right now we get to pick an ability, and these abilities can be slotted either into active slots or into upgrade slots. The active slots make them into real attacks that you assign to a button, and if you put them in an upgrade slot, every single one of these abilities can be mixed Mixed and mashed, permuted and combined with other abilities to make them do different things. So as an example, this mask ability right here, if we add it to the upgrade slot of another ability, it raises the potency of most abilities when used from behind. If we take the upgrade from this one right here, the bounce ability, if we use it as an upgrade, it adds a chain reactive bounce effect to most functions. Very, very cool. However, were we to put these in their slots by themselves, then this one would just make us invisible for six seconds, and this one would fire a laser that bounce all over the place. So it's kind of a cool set of abilities, and there's a lot of ways that you can choose to play your way through the game. What I'm going to do right now is I think I'm going to go for... Mask in this case because it seems like a really cool useful ability I don't think we've ever done anything stealthy here at the nerd castle typically I just bust up blocks with my forehead brute force it as hard as I can we're still here Look at that. Okay, you're in this is the setup utility. Now from the setup utility you can actually do all this modification that I've been talking about. The memory over on the left is how much memory the ability takes, and so we've got 16 memory slots open, and as we put in a new ability, so more powerful ones would take more slots, weaker ones would take less, and so if we wanted to slot some of this stuff, we've got to use up memory, and if we run out, well, we can't slot anything else. But for right now, all we need to do is add mask to another function. Now I could take mask as its own active ability if I wanted to be invisible, but I like jaunt a lot, so I'm going to stick with jaunt. You don't need too many evasive abilities in this game, otherwise you're not going to have enough DPS. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go and we're going to attach it to... Oh, never mind. we got to go like that. And then we will attach it to our melee attack, our crash attack, so that if we attack from behind, we do a ton of damage. And so there we are. We're ready to roll. Good. Just one more block. I want to show you something. All right. Hopefully there's no trick at the end of this. The come here, I want to show you something is why I'm no longer invited to the senior center parties. Okay, Fell for it once. A... Wait. Back, 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 back. Back, 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 back. He said. It appears as though he's got himself some upgrades. Well, I don't like any of these choices. Hold on, let me see if I can... We're going to go over here. We're going to double hit him. Triple hit him. Whatever. Lay into him. It'll be fine. There we go. So one's now dead. We want to watch out for the big dude over there. And he's pretty quick, so... Be careful about using jaunt up against walls or up against blocks. It seems to, like, bug out sometimes. I don't know how to explain it. Like, you've got to play with jaunt for a little while. You'll get... You get used to it, but it's it's weird. Like, sometimes it just gets you stuck against things. And so, I'm going to go for three attacks right here. A breach, a spark, and then a breach. The first spark is out. The first breach is out. And then the second spark goes out. We've got him at 540 out of 800, so he's not quite at 50% health yet. We haven't wounded that other little guy yet, though. See right there how it kind of it spawned like a thing in front of me? The game does that every now and again. It thinks it's hilarious. Let's see if I can kill the other little guy. Nope, I ended up just getting lasered. What did we learn? So I'm going to come over here with my next turn based. And we'll do the same thing as before. Do a Breach Spark Breach. And as always, we want to be careful whenever we use these abilities. Because if you look at the top of the screen until that bar recharges, we can't use anything but evasive maneuvers. Oh, we got caught. Okay, so we're going to go like this. And we're just going to finish him off now. So three crashes should do it. Pow, bam, smack. And that's how we bring it home. There's another one. Let's see if we can stun him a little bit. 
And so stun locked down he goes. Okay. We've beaten his little visored head to death. So is this whole block. Yeah, well, when the block steps up, the block gets knocked down. That's just the way things go here at the Nerd Castle with the NCE. Yeah, good call. That's our way out. I dig that motorcycle. It's got like an Indian type thing going on. I used to know a guy with a super sweet old Indian bike. Or like a low riding Kawasaki. I'm sorry, not low riding, but like a... It's got kind of a compact Kawasaki looking okay. frame. E64 on ramp. Five blocks down. Take the second right. Do not turn left. And... Thanks for the lift. You know I'm gonna turn left now because you said not to. I'm holding you by the haft, so that's about as not let go as you can possibly be as far as I go. I mean, I gotta, I gotta be real fond of you before I'll hold your haft. <sighs> Poor bike. Just ten more blocks to the set. Crashed our bike, but at least our hair is still looking fabulous. So I think with the way that the game saves, the game saves each time you go to like a new set. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this episode off a little bit early so that we can start fresh in the next one right when we jump back in. My name is Splattercat. This is the first episode of Transistor by Supergiant Games. You can get it for $19.99 on Steam right this second if you want it. So jump over there if you like the way the game looks and go play it. It's a lot of fun. Take care, everybody, and I will see you in episode numero dos.